Hey, Coach, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you, Kaylee. Go ahead. Great, we'll get started with questions, and John will have our first question. Hey, Sean, John Warrow, AP. Hi, John. Um, you've talked a lot about scar tissue um, and the benefits of having scar tissue. How much do you think the adversity of, uh, of the memory of losing in Kansas City a year ago and just the adversity that this team has gone through and overcome this season might help you guys uh, going into this weekend? Well, I think that's something you build through through experiences, um, and uh, and some of that, some of that you try and lean on as you as you try and continue to grow forward. Do you do you think this team has built some of that up, uh, or how eager are you to see what what you know what what this team has built up as far as scar tissue goes? Yeah, I just think you you know you don't like scar tissue at the time, but as you go through it, it. Uh, if you handle it the right way, it can help you, um, you know, down the road. And, and so, um, you know, we'll just see where this week goes. And just going back to, uh, I mean, to, to Micah Hyde, in effect, and, and, and him and Jordan, but Micah Hyde's interception as a former safety, um, what, what was it like seeing that interception and, and just how much Jordan and Micah have, I guess, maybe validated the faith and trust you put into them in, in making them, you know, two key pieces to your, to your team when you first got here. Yeah, they've, they've, they've done everything that, that we've asked and they've gone above and beyond really. Um, and um, you know, two class acts off the field and uh, their leadership and, and their play on the field, most importantly has, has been outstanding. And that interception. Yeah, I mean that interception was uh, was one of the I think one of the top plays of our season. Really, um, I know you want me to say that they watched tape of I showed them tape of me playing and and all that type of stuff, but uh, I mean I wish I could say that, uh, but I can't take the credit. I'm, you know, our Bobby Babbage, the safeties coach, and Jordan and Micah, they've got a very close relationship, and and they've all done an outstanding job. Thanks, Sean. Coach Mookie York is Ruffalo Sports and Good morning. Good morning. Uh, now, after watching, what, what are you eating there, man? <laughs> I'm trying to get a little snack in here before practice because Derek makes me. He's on. I got. I'm on his to-do list. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You got to get those nutrients in, right, coach? But uh, after watching tape, uh, how much is eye discipline and assignment football to you? How important is that? Yeah, it's huge to, to playing good defense. Um, discipline overall as a football team, discipline with eyes, discipline with feet. Um, that's, that's key. Absolutely. And uh, last year, uh, after the AFC Championship game, you told me some of the advantages that Kansas City had was size, speed, and physicality. Now, we know what Travis uh, Kelsey and Tariq Hill could do, but a Kansas City quit game with guys like Pringle, Hartman, and now Jared McKinnon. How physical must this defense be at the point of attack concerning their quit game, Coach? Yeah, their quit game is, um, you know, is, is lethal because they can turn a two-yard catch uh, screen into a big play into a 70 yard touchdown um, because of the speed that they have on offense. So uh, um, just an overwhelming amount of weapons on, on that side of the ball, just to name that side of the ball. Um, but I think Brett Beach has done a great job of putting together a balanced roster because when you look at special teams in their return game, uh, their kicking game, and then obviously the defense and what they've, what they've done with that defensive line uh, this season as well. No doubt, Coach. Tell that guy over there on your left side that said hello, and uh, good luck this week. All right. Thanks. <laughs> good morning, Sean. Dan Fates in Rochester. Um, I know you've had dozen, dozens of playoff appearances, but this being your seventh postseason game as head coach, how has your approach, mindset, preparation maybe changed since 2017 when you were in Jacksonville? Uh yeah, that's a great question. I think every, you know, because every, because of experience, it's changed. You know, I would say it's, it's tweaked a little bit. Um, and then because of the, the teams being different every year, it's changed just a little bit as well. Always just trying to give your team the best chance to play, to play at their best 
And um, I think that's that's the same this this week uh, with uh, with our game against the Chiefs. And uh, I don't know if you heard, but yesterday Andy Reid compared winning the Super Bowl to getting to eat a piece of chocolate cake, and that he's still hungry to get another piece of chocolate cake. I was wondering if what your food analogy would be uh, to winning a Super Bowl. I'll just focus on winning this week. Let's let's just keep it one week at a time. Um, but just yeah, I mean, on a lighter moment, I guess. Um, I'd appreciate a big chocolate milkshake. How about that? I appreciate it, Sean. Thanks. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Good morning, Sean. Um, last game against uh, Kansas City, you didn't blitz one time. Not one five man pressure the whole game. Uh, do you ever remember a game where you didn't have to dial, you didn't dial up one and, and just uh, can you comment on the dangerousness of uh, Mahomes when he extends plays? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, it goes back to talking about the weapons they have. Uh, you know, he's so dangerous um, in the pocket. He's so dangerous when he extend play, extends plays out of the pocket. Um, Andy does such a great job, uh, Andy and Eric, the enemy do such a great job in being creative with how they, um, you know, change the looks offensively. Um, and then, and then also in the run game with their run, their run game has been, um, you know, at a high level the last couple of weeks here. Um, and so they're, they, they're a tough offense to stop Mark and, um, you know, that's why we've got to have a good week of practice and we've got a big challenge in front of, in front of us that way. And then uh, lastly for me, uh, you know, the, they got a chance to be, they've been here before this, they, if they win, it'll be four years in a row at home for the AFC championship game for them. You guys, you know, you've been there before too. Do you, what do you think about kind of the psychological benefit of players uh, of having been there and done it? In other words, you, not that you beat them there once. Now that doesn't mean anything this week, but uh, you, what do you think about the psychological benefit of, of players uh, having been there, done that? Yeah, I just think overall, uh, Mark, we just got to keep knocking, you know, we just got to keep knocking at the door. And, uh, you know, they're a really, really good football team that's, you know, obviously been world champions of late and, and went back, um, you know, last season. So we just got, we got to keep, we're a good football team and uh, I believe, and we just got to keep knocking. Thank you. Yep. Good morning, Sean. Hope you're doing well. Good morning. Yep. Sal, thank you. Hope you are. I am. Um, I want to talk about if I could losing Tredavious when you did, um, you look back at the, at the games you've played since he's been out and I know you clearly miss him, but the numbers don't reflect that. The numbers reflect that you haven't really missed him at all. Can you just tell us a little bit of how your team has been so able to overcome such a big loss and play as well as you have in the secondary? Yeah, you know, I, we, we, I can tell you we, we miss Trey out there. Uh, you know, Dane and Levi have done a tremendous job. And I think just overall, you know, the guys have come together as a, as a team and played good team defense. Um, in Trey's absence. Do you, do you think that Levi Wallace in particular, Sean, I mean, this we've talked about him a million times, but I know it's old ground, but did he in particular maybe take that, um, you know, the loss of Trey as something that he really had to step into that number one role for you? Well, I think Levi along with the entire secondary has taken, you know, that as a challenge and embraced, embraced that challenge. You know, it's never about one guy, whether it's Trey or Levi and, uh, I just think it's it's about you know the overall team, the overall unit. In this case, the defense, and uh, um, so we've got to continue to play like that, um, you know, in Trey's absence, and and uh, you know take our game to another level, as you said. Okay, thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, it's Kim Jones. I think I'm next. Can you hear me? I got you, Kim. Yep. Good to Good. see you. Thank, thanks so much. Um, Wondering what Devin Singletary showed you in, you know, mid to late December and now since that really kind of turning a season around and becoming a real playmaker. Yeah, I think he's gotten into a good, into a good rhythm, Kim. Um, 
you know, when you when you get the touches, you're able to build up, um, you know, some some lather there and, and a rhythm and, um, you know, having the continuity we've had of late with the offensive line has helped as well. So the, I guess just the overall symmetry of the offense, um, you know, pass to run, run to pass. Uh, and then the execution of, of that has is, is, uh, been good to see. I like symmetry of the offense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to borrow that. Thanks so much, okay. John. All right. Thanks, Kim. Is that it? Four, Bailey. Oh, gotcha. Hey, Ace John, sorry about that. Josh Reed here. Yeah, uh, that's good. I gave you a second to grab a bite to eat real quick. The, um, hey, uh, Josh Allen's best games this year have been against the playoff teams, the teams that are in the postseason right now. Um, I think he's 18 touchdowns, two interceptions against those teams. How have you seen him kind of develop into that quarterback that not only relishes those big games and those big moments, but also – succeeds you know at, at the when the uh the spotlight's the brightest yeah i mean again i i think it's part of josh's evolution um when you're when you're improving your game you know those those games come right they come not only from the standpoint of who's on the schedule or who you face in the playoffs but the way josh has improved his game off season with Carson, or excuse me, uh, Jordan Palmer, and then in season with us, uh, Coach Dable, Coach Dorsey. I mean, it just, those games come. And, uh, and now I'm talking games that in terms of the, the stats, they come and they come against good teams as well. So it's never easy um, and it's never perfect, um, uh, but you, you continue to, to work and he's done a tremendous job of, of uh, putting in the time. A quick follow-up, Sean, and this isn't just about Josh. You've been around amazing players. What is it about them? What is that trait that makes the good ones great when it's when it's all on the line? Yeah, I think it's it's a burning desire to be the best. Uh, simply put, it's a burning desire to be the best, and not just the week of the game or on game day, running out of the tunnel on game day. It's it's the process going back to the off season. Like they always say, when nobody's watching, what are you doing? And uh, that's where that's where the results are are built. That's all we have time for today. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.